I sit alone in the zone, so gone Just think about the scriptures, knowing I was living wrong Praying that the Lord forgive me, in this walk I'm going strong As far as age, yeah, I'm grown, but spiritually a newborn Uh, not trying to be lukewarm, so weekly we bring it out Yeah, them trumpets gonna get First and foremost, I want to say call halal yahweh bashim yahweh shai Let's all praise this to the Heavenly Father, in the name of His only begotten Son Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus we are the Sicari, I here talking to so-called black, Latino, and Native Americans and showing them who they are in the Bible and what we need to do to get right as a nation. Right, brother? Brother right here. You said, I just heard you say something. You said you suicidal, brother. Why? What's getting to you, brother? Life, life be hard. It gets hard. You think life is supposed to be like this, though, brother? No? What, what, what do you think life should be, brother? Like, what is our purpose out here? To do good, huh? What's preventing us from doing this, brother? What's holding us down as a nation, brother? Negativity? Like what, brother? Give me an example. Jesus Christ. Just sit on the other side. Oh my God, bro. This nigga on my ass hella hard. I'm like, can you let me get off of this? Everybody got problems they need to work on, that's all. Everybody? But that's what I'm saying, like, other people's problems, what is, how does that affect us, though? Because motherfuckers have to hear about it. A lot of people don't want to hear about other people's problems. Because if you know you have a problem, you should have a solution. Sister, I'm talking to the brother right here, please. Because we got to help. We, we're out here for you, brother. You just said you're suicidal. I don't want to see none of my brothers and sisters to the point where they feel that it's better to end, to end their life, bro. You know what I mean? Because they, at no point should it just be like, you know what, this is so bad, I just want to quit and stop this, bro, right? Because we're all here for a purpose, right? You just said we're all here for a purpose to, to do something, right? God put us on here for a reason. And that, and that reason of us, sister, please, sister, God, that purpose of ours is getting uh, uh, limited to be able to even achieve because how you just said, like, our surroundings, the position that we're in right now. Right, because the Bible calls us the black Latino Native Americans the kings and princesses and priests of this earth. But if we're the kings and pri and princesses and the priests, why are we destroyed like this, bro? Why do we feel like it's better for us to not even be here? You know what I mean? Why, bro? If I'm telling you king, you know what? What's your name, brother? What's your name? Javon. Javon, if I'm telling you a king, but the king is telling me, you know what? I'd rather not even be here. Right? We need to fix our kingdom then. We need to fix what's, what we're supposed to be ruling then, right? Because right now we're not ruling anything, bro. So I'm saying, what can we do then to... What can we do then to better us then? So that you feel that you don't... That that you belong here. That this is you have a purpose here. That you that you need to be here. Amen. What is it, brother? Pray? You see, and we just talked about that earlier. Right? About how God doesn't hear sinners, right? And you, go ahead, brother. What about Paul? You need peace and quiet and pray, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you do, though, brother. Yeah. Right? You do, though. But this is how Christ tells us this, right? Get, go, go, to, go to Matthew 4. Right? But the Bible also says, you know, pray as you're walking, pray as you're doing what anything. Does it say that right? In the Bible? We're going to get it right now, because right? You're lying on the Bible, oh, my don't gosh. Do that. Don't do that. Hear this. Do that. Sister, doesn't the Bible also say for a woman to be in quietness and subjectiveness? And to be a, a subject to men? Where does it say that? Give me Genesis 3 and 16, bro. I'm a, I'm a, I got you right here. Let's see if you listen to the Bible. Got it? Yep, this is Genesis 3 and 16 in the GNT. And he what said to the King woman, the he King says James to the woman, you're a woman, right? Is that the King James? This is King James Version, yes. Nah, I'm special. I'm a special okay. Child. If you hate on me, that's a crime. Go ahead. And he said, and he said to the woman, I will increase your trouble in pregnancy no uh -huh. and your pain in giving birth. Uh -huh. In spite of this, you will still have desire for your husband, yet you will be subject to him. Right, you're going to be subject to your husband. And, and the way it's looking like right now, no wonder. But here's, here's the thing. Brother, give me Matthew 4 again. Matthew 4 on how we should pray. Because he, he just said that we need, uh, we need peace and quiet, right? Six, Salakia. Go ahead. Watch this, brother. This is Matthew 6 and 4 in the GNT. Oh, 6 and 5 in the GNT. 
When you pray, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrite. Uh -huh. They love to stand up and pray in the houses of worship uh -huh. and on the street corners. Right. So when you go to church, right? When you go to church, nobody's praying up your sister. First of all, right? So what? What? When you go to church, you see those people go to the very front of the church and they start talking in tongues. They start going crazy and everybody's looking at them and they're like, "Damn, you know what? That man up there has the Holy Spirit. You see how he's dancing and doing all this? They're doing this for attention." Right? Same thing how you see people out here on the streets and you and they start doing the same thing for people. Oh, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. They want to be seen of men, right? Go ahead. Watch this. They, of, of, in the houses of worship and on the street corners uh -huh. so that everyone will see them. So that everyone sees them, right? Uh-huh. I assure you, they have already been paid in full. And so people look at them, they're like, you know what? That's a real worshiper of God. They're out here praying in public. But what did Christ say? When you pray, uh -huh. do not be like the hypocrites. Don't be like the hypocrites. You don't want to be hypocrites, right? Go ahead. They love to stand up and pray in the houses of worship and on the street corners uh -huh. so that everyone will see them. Uh-huh. Keep on. I assure you, they have already been paid in full. Keep on. But when you pray. When you pray. Go to your room. Mm -hmm. Close the door. Uh-huh. And pray to your father. In, in quiet, how you just said, right? Uh-huh. Who is unseen. And, and your father, who sees what you do in private, will reward you. That's how we pray, brother. I mean, but like how we were saying earlier. Give me, give me that in John 9, 3, 31. About how God doesn't hear sinners, right? So I ask you, how do we change that so that God does hear sin? It's simple. We, we do what he tells us to do so we're not sinners no more, right? Then that's how God is going to hear, hear us, right? We got to change how we act, change how we live, do everything that God tells us to do. Then he's going to be like, you know what, I'm going to listen when you pray, when you're asking for something, right? Because now you're listening. You're a true believer now. You're a true follower now. Which one's Go ahead. John? 931. 931. Um, this is the book of John, chapter 9 and verse 3. We know that God does not listen to sinners. Uh -huh. He does listen to the people who respect him uh -huh. and do what he wants them to do. Right? And that's why I asked you then. Now we do the commandments then, right? What is there? Uh, is there any commandments that you feel that you're lacking in, brother? Let me ask you a better question. Is praying, praying that's the one thing you're doing? Yeah, that's the one thing that I don't do as if I should. You know, okay. Like I pray, I don't pray like I should. Okay. See, and, and that's the thing. It comes with su su submitting, right? You're submitting to God, and you're like, you know what? I need something. I, I need this from me, right? But then you got to do your part, right? You got to start doing what God commands. Now we got to get into what are the commands then? What are the commandments we need to be doing for God to listen to us, right? And it's simple stuff, brother. Right? Because how we just said, we're, you're a king on here. So God gives you instructions on how to be a good king on here, right? A king is going to eat like a king. A king is going to act like a king. Is going to carry himself as, you know, you're a king, brother. Right? So, for example, food, something so simple, right? We know our body's a temple, right? So we're going to give our temple what God wants it to be in there, right? When, we, when you go to the temple and back in the days, they were offering what? Like lamb, sheep. You know, clean animals. You know there's a distinction in the Bible between clean and unclean animals? Right? What's an what's a, a unclean animal? Yeah. Swine. She's right, brother. Swine is an unclean animal. Swine. A swine is a pig pig is unclean. You're not even supposed to touch it when it's dead, right? But our people eat this, right? I've had church, church uh, we've, I've gone to church when I was young, and at the church they give you pepperoni pizza right there, right? But we're not supposed to eat. God doesn't like that. And then you, then after the church service, you do something that God tells you not to do, and then you go and pray at home thinking you're good, but God just said he don't hear sinners, right? Give me Isaiah 1 and 15. Check this out. Because it's the same thing in the Old Testament, the New Testament, God doesn't change, right? You believe that? God doesn't change? If, I, if God said, you know what, I hate this a hundred years ago, he's going to hate this right now, right? Go ahead. Let me see. Uh, go, start at 15. Check this out. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 15. When you lift your hands in prayer. Brother, when you lift your hands in prayer, what? I will, I will not look at you. Uh-huh. No matter how much you pray, uh -huh. I will not listen. 
uh -huh. or your hands are covered with blood. Right, our people have been messing up so much that we mess up all day thinking we're doing something good, right? We're gonna go and sin, go rob people, go steal, go, go, go smoke dope, go sell dope, go be prostitutes, go be pimps, and think that God is gonna hear you when you pray, what right? Do you mean that? Go ahead. Verse 16, wash yourselves clean. Do it again, say it again. Wash yourselves clean. Uh huh. Stop all this evil that I see you doing. Uh huh. Yes, well, stop doing right evil. Now. Stop doing evil. What else? Verse 17, and learn to do right. So you got to learn what God wants you to do, right? Uh-huh. See that justice is done. Uh-huh. Help those who are oppressed, give orphans their rights, uh -huh. and defend widows. And what? And, and then what? Keep on. The Lord says, now let's settle the matter. Let's settle the matter. You are stained red with sin. Right? So if God is saying, look, we have all this sin as a nation, right? Go ahead. But I will wash you as clean as snow. But he says he's going to wash you, right? We got, we're going to figure out how we get washed then, right? Because that's how he's going to listen, right? Go ahead. Although your stains are deep red, you will be as white as wool. Uh-huh. If you, if you will only obey me. If you obey him. It's that simple. Uh-huh. You will eat the good things the land produces. Uh-huh. But if you deny me, you are doomed to die. Right, so we got to listen to God. It's that simple, right? Now give me, give me Ephesians. No, let me, let me, let me, oh, let me, go ahead. I, the Lord, have spoken. Give me, uh, 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 uh what is that? In Ephesians? When is the washing of the water of the word? Is that three? Is that five, twenty-six? I'm going to show you. Because how, how would you, how would you get washed? How do we wash away a sin? Because a sin isn't just on you, right? I don't see a sin just on me and be like, okay, take it off of me. How do you wash sin away, brother? You just get the King James. You said what, brother? Right, you practice. You do. You do what's good, brother. Right. But then you you get washed through what? What is it? What is it that's gonna wash you from it? Because you just stepping into a building isn't what's gonna fix it, right? We just talked about it earlier. It's actions, right? Love is an action in the Hebrew, right? That's what we we're going into, right? So check this out. This is what the water is, brother. This is Ephesians chapter five and verse twenty-six. That he might sanctify it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it. So you want to be sanctified. You want to be cleansed, right? With the washing of the water by the word. By the what? By the word. The word is what's going to wash you, brother. You diving into this book, seeing how, seeing how God is, how we please God, what he requires of us. That's how you get washed. Changing, right? Because just knowing it isn't going to do anything. Give me that. In, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Verse 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Mm -hmm. That's how we're going to, that's how we want to present ourselves to God, right? We, we want to show up to him and him look at you and be like, you know what? Yeah, you deserve to be in here, right? It says not even a wrinkle, not even a blemish, right? <laughs> you, everything on you is going to be on point. And that's how we got to act, that we need to be on point. Right? We're not, nobody's faking it up here. That's the church is what's going to tell you. They're going to say, come as you are. It's okay. You can be a sinner. Right? You can keep eating pork. You can, now we're going to bless homosexual marriages, how they do in the damn Catholic church when God says he hates that. Right? Go ahead, brother. What's your question? How, how is that judging somebody? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And that's judging. How? Because she's telling you how you are. Mm -hmm. She's telling us how we are. We fake it until we make it. That's basically what she's saying. Okay. Well, here, here, here's the thing, right? There's two things I, I'd want to say, right? One thing, nobody should be faking it. If, if you can look at somebody, for example, if I see a Jehovah's Witnesses or a Mormon or whatever, they say, yeah, I'm a believer of God. I do, I do what he tells me to do. But then I see he shaves his face. That's a sin. He doesn't wear fringes. That's a sin. Yes, sir. I don't give a fuck. I my whole body. That's fine. But a man. I'm going to give you an example, right? Oh, let me finish that point, right? Let me finish that point. So a man a man telling you this, that he's doing, following what God tells him to do, but then I can see that he's sinning. That man's faking it, right? He's not fooling me. If he's not fooling me, he's not going to fool the father at all, right? Check this out. Because, for example, I just said, if a man is shaving his face, the Bible says, do not shave your face, that's a sin. That man can tell me all he wants, but I'm seeing he's not listening to God, right? Go ahead. Which one? Uh, 
give me that in James 2 and 20. Right? And then we'll get and then we'll get about the shaving thing, right? Yeah, that's the main thing, man. Nobody should be faking it, bro. If you're really a follower of Christ, if you're really a Christian, a true Christian, you're gonna do you're gonna follow Christ and Christ didn't sin, so you're gonna be exactly like Christ, right? And we could do all things through Christ. So we're gonna be like him. Go ahead. This is the book of James, chapter two and verse twenty. But wilt thou know, O vain man? Let's see, hold on. Uh twenty two. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Or actually, give me one, one in twenty. Salaki. Yeah. yeah. Is it okay Go ahead. to be angry with God? This Jeez. is the book of James, chapter one and verse twenty-two. Uh huh. But be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers. You act on it. Uh huh. And not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Because you're not deceiving God. How I just said. Now give me that with shaving. What is that? Leviticus twenty-one. Nineteen. There you go. Thank you, Tulak. Right? He said, "You can't fool a simple man. You're not going to create the cre. You're not going to. Uh, uh, the creator is going to see everything, right?" Like, Jesus Christ. Really felt, like, Go ahead. You know? I'm sorry. My papa was an elder. My nana was a pioneer. I was born in the church. I love Listen, man. You just told me your dad was a pimp. He's he's pimping our my people. Dad. That's the problem. Go ahead. This is the book of Leviticus, my chapter dad. 19 my and verse 27. Uh -huh. Ye shall not round the sister. I thought you were going to be quiet my in the dad. church, right? My sister, dad. you got to be quiet. You got to be quiet, sister. Oh heaven. my God. Ye shall not round the corners of your head. Uh -huh. Neither you shall thou mar the corners of thy you beard. Got to fuck uh -huh. up. Right, so you don't mar. Oh my so God, you don't you? mar the beard, brother. Oh, right, you don't destroy it, sister. We're having a. You gotta be polite. You just said you were polite. No, I'm here to tell oh my you. God. You're not here to do a damn thing oh up God, here. What? All right, oh you're God, not gonna what? do a damn thing up here. I'm gonna tell you that I'm right not now. Do what? This who is you, the give me Mark four and fifteen, bro. Tell me what to do. This nigga trying to tell me what to do. Jesus Christ. Do I condone you to let you do what you do? This was wrong with our people, man. Go ahead. This is the book of Mark, chapter no, 4, verse 15. You. You don't and these are they by the wayside uh -huh. where the word is sown. The word is being sown right now don't to you, right? Uh -huh. no more. But I when they have mad. heard, Satan cometh immediately. Who comes? Satan cometh don't immediately. No People talking about, me. yeah, you know what? The, my dad is a church and blah, blah, blah. He, he did this and that. They're being Satan right now. I'm trying to sow the word on you so you can better yourself so you don't have these suicidal thoughts. But here comes the damn Satan over here. Right. Right? Yeah, so that you understand this. You uh, see, bro, this is, our people are sick, she man. She's on the left hand side right. See? Madness. This is what I'm saying. You're, you're, none of this, what we're talking up here, being real with our people, gets them this mad. I mean, when you go to church up there, what do you, you just hear good things, clapping and this and that. I want to hear good things. But when we try to better our people, that's where Satan's going to be at. You don't see nobody standing up when the priest and the pastor's up there in the church talking. No one's going to butt in there. But when we're out here t showing the people what they need to hear, Satan's gonna pop up, brother. Right. Right. And you need to be you need to be uh, uh, discern this and understand that when you're trying to do better, something's gonna come try to knock you down, bro. Keep this word from getting to you. But you gotta be that seed that's planted in good soil. Your feet, both feet, like how we say, ten toes down, brother. So that when you get that water, and you you have good roots and you flourish, brother. So that when you're out here, so that you can be out here teaching your people doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Showing them how black, Latino, Native Americans, how we're God's chosen people and how we need to act. And there should be no damn reason why any of God's uh, 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 prized possession should want to off themselves, bro. And think that the world is better without them because we need you here. Right? Get, get whatever you're going to get, then get Revelation 22. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 23 and verse 19. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. Mm -hmm. And knoweth and not the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. We're not you're not gonna fool God, brother. Right? Like how like what we're saying right now, you can sit here and be like, Yeah, you know what, that sounds good, and then turn around and go buy dope, go sell dope, go do whatever, go that that's not gonna change anything for, for us and it's not gonna affect God because God already knows this. You're not gonna fool God. So you want if you want better for yourself, you gotta do better, right? Give me Revelation twenty two now. Go ahead. Beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. Mm -hmm. you want 22? 22 and, uh, uh, from the top. I believe that's what I want. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 22, and from the top. Yeah. And he showed me a pure river of water of, of, water of life, mm -hmm. clear as crystal. Right, this is in kingdom connotation, right? Go ahead. 
proceeding out the throne of God uh -huh. and of the Lamb, uh -huh. in the midst of the street of it, in the midst of the stream, uh -huh. and and on either side of the river uh -huh. was there the tree of life, uh -huh. which bare twelve manner of fruits. Twelve manner of fruits appear. We have twelve different types of fruits appear. These twelve tribes, right? We're saying you're one of them, right? right? More than likely, you would be from the tribe of Judah. Right, a powerful tribe. Right. That's the same tribe that that uh, uh, Yahweh Shai, who the real calls Jesus, comes from. Right, powerful tribe. One of these fruits that you were gonna be, Lord willing, what? And yielded her fruit every month. Yielded her fruit, and what else? And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. So you got to get to the point where, like how a, a powerful brother of ours says, we're literally out here trying to save the world right now, brother. Get the Black Latino Native Americans where they need to be, so that we're able to do this. Because right now we're seeing our people we're destroyed people out here, right? Month, if if the white man ain't doing a damn thing for us right now, they're not helping our people. Right. The Asian man ain't doing anything. I it's up to God's chosen people who we're saying is to get right, to get in that position so that we're able to help save the world, bro. No, Literally. He, he you know what I mean? That and for that, for us to do that, you need to be here, right? <laughs> you, you, we need soldiers out here, brother. Right? Just how it said in Ezekiel, the exceeding great army. But what's the what's the army without soldiers, brother? We need you here. I don't want to ever hear you say that you think it's better off if you commit suicide, brother. You shouldn't even have those thoughts, King. That's exactly what you are, brother. Right? Of course, brother. I think suicide is a good thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm saying, bro. I'm saying, bro. Nah. Suicide is a beautiful thing. Suicide is horrible, man. No, you're, you're a demon. No, you're a demon. You're a demon. Because I stopped you. I, I, I can care less. So I can care less. We don't have to act like some type of way. Yeah. First of all, I can care less what you're talking about. Give me wisdom of Solomon 1 and 12. I'm talking to the brother. You're, 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 you're a demon for real. That's all. What did he call me? A demon. Come here. Go ahead. This is the book of wisdom. This is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 12. I'm talking right now to your face. You're a demon, period. Seek not death. I, I'll say it ten times over. You're a demon. Here. Seek not death in the error of your life. What's your name, brother? Javon. Javon. Have you heard this before? You talked this before, right? Uh, no, I'm talking about. Have you talked? Have you seen this up here before and talked to it? Uh, oh, yeah, I've seen it right here before. Have you talked this before? No. Okay. Well, like you said, well, you said life was getting to you earlier, right? Huh? Life is getting to you earlier. I Give me Sirach 29:21. Do you have a place to stay, brother? Do you have a roof? Do you have a food to eat every day? Do you have clothes on your back, as you can see? That's that's never, that's all you gotta worry about for real. Because there's people that live on the streets that, you know, survive. That's the, that's their way of surviving. Maybe they do drugs. Maybe they sell their body, which is not necessarily a good thing. But I, I don't, they're not thinking about suicide. You have it better than them. Right. So the basic necessities of life is what you already have. The only thing is that you don't have. Tapping into the source of the Heavenly Father, you, the, the, the person that you're supposed to be having faith in, and things to get better over time. You, uh, read this again, Father. And read down. Seek not, seek not death in the error of your life. Seek not death in the error of your life. That could be in many things. Like this, how you think is where it starts as well. Like how those thoughts are creeping in your mind right now. Those aren't spiritual things. I, I, it is, but it isn't. Those are more like, like how this demon is next to you talking. There's other demons in, in your mind that give you those thoughts. How long have you been having those thoughts, though? Since you was a kid. And nothing's happening. You haven't done anything, right? You haven't done anything to yourself, right? See? So you're, you're, you're stronger than that. Oh, you try to take, slit your wrist? Hey, man. Most high put you here for a purpose. Right. Not to, not to kill yourself, brother. Is to get this word today. After all the time you've done, whatever you've done in the past, get the getting the word today is the most, pro uh, the primary thing in your lifestyle, or it should be moving forward. You read that from the top again? Seek not death in the error of your life, uh -huh. and pull not upon your self-destruction with the works of your hands. Don't put upon the destruction of the works of your own hands. Don't slit your wrist. Don't take a thousand pills. Don't jump off a bridge. Don't, you know, <laughs> do anything crazy and risk your own life just because you think you, you, your mind are playing tricks on you like, like that Ghetto Boy song is. Your mind, your mind's playing tricks on you, brother. You got to have more, more authority over your thoughts. Give me that in uh, Corinthians, actually. You know what I want? 
Take captivity your thoughts. Corinthians, give me that. Keep reading. Verse 13. For God made not death, neither have he pleasure in the destruction of the living. Yeah, God doesn't have pleasure in, in, in somebody taking their life. Even murder. God doesn't take pleasure in that. You know what I mean? Even though we, could, we would consider that judgment in some sort. But at the rapid rate it's going and how it's been going on in America, especially with, within our community, that's not how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to love each other, you know what I mean? Forgive each other, not hold grudges. You know what I mean? Even against your own self. You know? That's how you hurt yourself. Like, oh, man, I don't, I don't love myself enough. You look at yourself in the mirror like, man, I'm ugly, I don't have a girl, I don't have a job, like whatever the case may be. You compare yourself to people. Those are things you're supposed to be doing. But that's how society has been created to have people think that way, you know what I mean? You know? So that's not, like I said, you, you have it better than most people, even in other countries. People that don't have roofs over their head, literally. They have walls with no roof. There are people who live in Mexico, There's people that like eat mud pies every day out there in Haiti. Right. You go to Haiti, bro, like, you're living 10 times better than them. Poverty in other countries. Like, this, the yeah. poverty in other countries is astounding. Poverty you're you're, 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 you're way better. So that's that's a leg up. I'm not saying it's a, a, comparing yourself to our own people because that's how they live, but how you're thinking right now and, like, how how you say life's getting to you, like, it doesn't, it doesn't seem that way. You know what I mean? Just from my personal opinion. Like I said, I don't know what goes on at your home, but guess what? You having a house, food, and clothing? The bare, that's, that's the bare minimum anybody can ask for. You know what I mean? Especially at your, at your own convenience. You can come and go as you please, eat as you please. You know what I mean? Keep reading. Verse 14. For he created all things that they might have their being. Uh -huh. And the generations of the world were helpful, uh -huh. and there is no poison of destruction in them, right. nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. Read on. For righteousness is immortal. Righteousness is immortal. Even though there's death and destruction and corruption on the on earth, there's righteous people in this world still fighting against that. You know what I mean? She says she's on the left-hand side. We're on the right-hand side. Right. We're on the, the good side. The left-hand side is the wicked side. That's why she said that. She don't realize how, how spiritual she said. She's a demon. She, her, she has spirits on her. She him. might have. She might be on drugs. Who knows? But either way, she has demons on her. That's way, why she said she's on the left hand side. Don't even. Right, right. You, you're, you're a demon. Really period. Go ahead. Verse sixteen. But ungodly men with their works and words call it to them. For ungodly men with their works and words call it destruction to them. So if you practice, like say you practice what you preach or things like no that, harm, no you reap what you sow. That's what people are into. So if you get out that negative energy, of course, God is going to repay you eventually with that negativity. People can sell evil. drugs for 20 years. They get caught with nobody. 400 bricks, you know, and kilos, that whatever. That go to jail for the rest of your life. That's your karma. Cheat. You got rich off it, but guess what? Now it's time for you to get judged because God has his own timing. That's why I have to pray. It's your timing to listen to his word today. Go ahead. For when they thought to, to have it their friend, they consumed it not uh -huh. and made a covenant with it. Because they are worthy to take part with it. Yeah, worthy to take part in that negativity. Because they participate in it. You know what I mean? That's how it's supposed to be. You're not doing too many negative things, are you? What, what, what do you consider yourself doing on a daily basis that... Because like, you said you don't pray enough, which is not necessarily the worst thing you could do. Because if, you, if you're thinking about things... <laughs> masturbation. Masturbation. Well, ultimately, brother, there's no law against that. But... um Get you a woman, brother. That's, that's what we would say. Get you, get you a woman, brother. I'm sorry? What did he say? What? I mean, I, I, that's, I, I'm not sure where you got that from, but I'm... I'm Telling you right now, like, get you a woman, brother. So it's appropriate. So that that could be sinful as well. Like when you when you uh, ejaculate, you're supposed to watch afterwards. And if you don't, that's where sin can come in as well. That's not right. <laughs> but, but there's no there's no law against that. But we we would prefer you to do it with a woman, not a white woman, not an Asian woman, not a. I mean, ultimately. You could have a relationship with them, but we prefer you to have a relationship with have your, 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 your like sisters. You know what I mean? It's not sisters literally, but the people are your, are your people. What you got? You finished that? Uh, 
to go some more, but it's just I'm done with the chapter. Yeah, that's all I wanted. Go ahead. And it's Second Corinthians ten and five. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the now knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the okay. obedience of Christ. No, no, you gotta bring in captivity every thought that is what? Against Christ, you said? The obedience of Christ. Christ taught people to repent from their sins. Christ taught people to keep his commandments. Christ taught people to forgive your, your people. Don't hold grudges, like I said. Prepare for the prepare for the kingdom of heaven as I am, which is changing your mindset, changing your whole thought process, live your life according to the truth, which is his commandments, and treating your people according to the truth as well. You know what I mean? What you got? What do you mean marriage? That's not in the Bible. Give me that in Genesis 24. Whoa, That's not in the Bible, sir. Go ahead. Uh, this is Genesis 24 and 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. Isaac brought her, which is Rebecca, into his mother Sarah's tent. So he took his woman into a tent. Read. And took Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Did you hear that? What happened? He reading? Yeah, the demon's talking, go ahead. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebecca, and she became his wife. He took her into the tent. She became his wife in the tent. What happened? <laughs> Sex is marriage in the Bible. So the church has brought out a narrative that you can't have sex before marriage. That's not in the Bible anyway. Right. Now, of course, it's not necessarily an issue if that's the dynamic that you want to be accustomed to. But that's the difference. Like having a piece of paper and jumping over a broom and dressing up, that's not going to change any, any marriage for the long haul. Having an understanding of what marriage is spiritually before the sex, that's what's going to drive the marriage and having faith in God and, and, uh, and believing in the words of the Bible. You know what I mean? So that's what's going to help our community as well. Not just sleeping around things like that. And having an understanding of, oh, I can just have sex and oh, if I don't like her at one point in time in the future, I can just leave her or vice versa. You know what I mean? Because that's not, that's, not how, that's not how it's supposed to be. Once you lay down on a woman, unless she commits adultery on you or you commit adultery on her or any type of other fornication like lesbianism or homosexuality or... Those are all things you can leave them for, but anything outside of that, you're supposed to reconcile with your with your uh, uh, in your relationship with your partner. You know what I mean? So that's why sex is powerful, and that's, it's treated as less than these days. But in our understanding and how we're supposed to walk as Israelites, we're supposed to treat that sacred. You know what I mean? Now we can get with a woman that already has children and was married in the past and doesn't understand that, but. Before you get with her in the future, you gotta understand that, hey, once I lay down with you, you have to understand that we're together forever in the eyes of God. You know what I mean? And not with a piece of paper. And that's why marriage is failed today. Like, they just have, they just want the ceremony. You know what I mean? They want the piece of paper. When it doesn't change the relationship at, at all, technically. You just, you just signed on with the state. That's all. You just signed your marriage with the state. And now if you get divorced, you have to look at the state and lose all your money and resources, whatever the case may be. Because they're your children. Does marriage protect a woman if she's a good Christian? What a good I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what a good Christian is. That's not a term I, I believe in, but especially when it comes to the, the church. What you got? Uh, you you wanted that in uh, Sirach too? Yeah. You you give me this. The real church? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is Sirach 29 and 21, the GNT. The necessities of life. The necessities of life? Three. Are water, food, clothing, in a home where you can have privacy. It is better to be poor and live under your own crude roof, roof than to enjoy lavish banquets in other people's homes. That's what the Bible says. Once you get water, food, clothing, and a roof on your head, if you, if you even pay the, the paycheck, that's better than being poor and living in someone else's house, depending on them. For handout, three. Be happy with what you have. Be happy with what you have. 
Are you happy with what you have, brother? Yes, I am. Okay, so you shouldn't have suicidal thoughts again. Or is that some from outside source you think? Because like I said, everybody has demons that's attacking them. You gotta recognize that though. It's not you. Especially if you say you had it since you were a kid. Your, your childhood isn't a reflection of what's going on today, but at the same time, you have those thoughts still. And like I said, I'm pretty sure everybody's had those thoughts in the past. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure they do. You know what I mean? What's up? Well, that's just probably more understanding now. You have a, you're living life, actually. You're actually doing what you're doing on a daily basis, moving around, occupying your time with a job or whatever the case, whatever the case may be. So, go ahead. Right. It says, be happy with what you have, even if it isn't very much. Even if it isn't very much. Most of us in America, we're living paycheck to paycheck, brother, struggling on a daily basis, but guess what? We're still here. We still have an opportunity to grow and get better, whether it's financially, spiritually, in any relationship, whatever things may be, and all, all in, in the most high will. But like I said, the first the first direction we're supposed to be going in is with the commandments, to keep the laws of God. So we can have that opportunity to get blessed by the most high, by our positive positive actions of, uh, uh, of following his commandments, like I said. Go ahead. Right, it says, and don't listen to anyone who would insult your home and family. That's how it works. You know what I mean? Like, we're here to encourage our people. Like I said, it's not the end of the road. Like, right now, there's a lot of turmoil going on overseas and in America. We're not worried about it. Why? Because we know what's going to happen as long as we're on the right path, the narrow road, as they call it. Keeping the commandments to the end, having faith. That's what you got to That's what we got to hone in on, brother. Keep the commandments, period. That's the first thing you got to do. You from San Francisco? You out here every week? Are you coming out here every next Saturday? Not that far. You got a flyer? Yeah. Yeah, my number's on the flyer. You can hit me up whenever, brother. I'm, I'm not that far. You know what I mean? You about to get up out of here? Okay. It's all good, brother. What's your name was again? Javon. Nice to meet you, brother. Nice talking to you. All right, man. Absolutely. Like I said, it's not in the road for you, but it's time to step up to the place in these last days. You know what I mean? Yeah, All right, brother. What you got? Second Corinthians six and ten in the GNT. It says, "Although saddened, we are always glad. We seem poor, but we make many people rich. We seem to have nothing, yet we really possess everything." This is true. It's all going to be manifested in the future once we get right. Boy, without you, you feel what's going on. What's that? You have some questions? You Arabs or what? You can get. Oh, it's okay. You can come up under here though, since it's raining. You say you had questions for it? Well, we believe, we believe first and foremost that the people that you would see as so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, we are the biblical Israelites of the Bible. Patrilinearly, through history and archaeology, we can prove that. We can go into the Bible. And, and like I said, I'm not sure if you believe in the Bible. You, 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 you Muslim? or yes, Muslim. Muslim? Okay. Have you read the Torah? It's no, not? I have not. That's why I don't, like, I'm just... Are you a practicing Muslim? Yes, I am. I'm Muslim. I was born Muslim. Okay. You just kept rubbing on there, right? Yeah. Okay. That's all good. Like I said, our, our mission here, as far as living in America, because we know there's Israelites all over the world, but our job here is to wake up our people to the truth of their identity because it's been stripped from us. You're familiar with slavery and things like that that happened to black Americans, Hispanics. You familiar with that? At least know what I mean. 20. Okay. Like I said, you're, you're old enough to know the history of America, right? Yeah. So the history of America for our people hasn't been so pleasant. Even though, you know, people don't really think about it anymore, but ultimately there's different dynamics of that still going on today. And it happens all the time. 
through different mechanisms as far as putting our people to sleep spiritually, especially in the Christian church. We don't think any of our people should be in a Christian church. I'm pretty sure as a Muslim, you don't necessarily agree with Christianity as well, but um, you believe in Isa and yeah. right, the, the yeah. gospels, things like that, of course. So we hope that the, the biblical teachings as well, the way he taught, and ultimately the ultimate goal in what do you want to call it? The ultimate um, result of this is going to bring world peace. You know what I mean? Because we know that. I was really just wondering, like, because like I said, like, I, I, there's like this other um, Israelite group that I know that they talk down I feel like on a lot of other religions, and especially uh -huh. Muslim. And I just, I don't know if you guys are like that. So I, that's what I was, I was like, I don't know how, like, exactly you guys believe in or what you guys preach. Or uh -huh. Well, we don't necessarily. We, we, we're not Muslims. We don't we don't believe in the Quran at all. No, no, I know that. I'm just saying how you guys feel about Muslims. Like, I don't know how. Like, well, it depends. Cause a Muslim can be anybody, right? Yeah. Exactly. So if there are people, which is what we would say, Black is Native American, we would tell them, hey, that's not your religion. Let that religion. Based off their race. Absolutely. What's that? My train comes in two minutes. Okay, not a problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we believe that our people need to come back to their true heritage. Okay, you know what I mean? Time. No problem. And like I said, we don't have to down talk Islam or uh, 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 the Quran. We can just point out the flaws. We can just point out the, 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 uh, the contradictions. We can just point out how there's no benefit in following it. That's all. You know what I mean? There's all types of madness in the Quran in the Hadith that we don't hold to. Some black people do. Some people say they're, they're, they're Muslim. You know what I mean? <coughs> now, she, of course, she's a, she thinks, oh, anybody can be a Muslim. Of course, that's because it's similar to the Catholic doctrine. It's universal. Anybody can be a Muslim. Why? Because it's all about, uh, 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 what, what do they say? It's the fastest growing religion now? Yeah. Like, that's a... a, a they deserve a, a medal for it. Like, who cares? <laughs> That's the same thing. That, give me that in uh, 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 um, Matthew 7. Matthew 7 and 13. This is the problem, man. Either, whether it's Islam or Christianity, it's, it's the same thing. They try to make, turn it into a universal thing. Anybody can believe. And obviously, you know, I'm on TikTok a lot. There's flip-flopping between Islam and Christianity. People are leaving Christianity to become Muslims. Muslims are leaving Islam to become Christians. And all doesn't matter. Unless you come to the truth, which is the truth of the Bible as Israelites, right? Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in, the, in at the straight gate. Uh -huh. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that needs destruction. Yeah. What's the claim of the Muslim? We're the fastest growing religion. There's 2 billion of us on the earth. Christianity, there's 2 billion Christians. Okay, what well, does that have to do with anything? There's still chaos and death and destruction all over the world based on your belief. So who's it changing? You're still in sin. You're still doing, I mean, there's extremists everywhere, but as far as just the basic level, Christian or uh, Muslim, they're not doing anything for anybody. Especially if you're in America, it's watered down. Like I told y'all uh, uh, a couple days ago, or uh, this week, I was riding with an a, a, a Egyptian lady, an Egyptian girl. And she told me she was keeping Robin on. I'm like, okay, that's, that's what's up. You know, I'm just keeping it cool with her. You know, I'm, I'm at work, so I can't really shit on her. But even though I wasn't going to do that anyway, I was asking, oh, what, what's going on? Like, how, do, like, how, how do you do it? Like, what do you And obviously, we started talking about the dietary law and things like that. She keeps a lunar Sabbath, or not Sabbath, but lunar calendar, but they go by the sliver, because that's why it's on the flag. They, they believe that. Which is, comes from Babylon. They don't know that. But anyways. Um, I'm saying that to say, like, she can do that. <laughs> She's an Egyptian. Wait, what does that mean? I always wondered about that. That's it. It's just it's part of the moon, the cycle of the moon. You know what I mean? <laughs> but there's a couple of the Muslims that I found out who were keeping the Ramadan. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right, well, that's what's up. And then other people ask me, do you fast? I'm like, yeah, I fast whenever, whenever I want. <laughs> I don't have to do it for 30 days straight or 29 days or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, like, our people shouldn't be following these 
uh, universal religions acting like they're going to be better off doing it. You know what I mean? Because every time we talk to the Muslim or Christian, they get their head chopped off spiritually. Because it's not the truth. Whatever book you believe in, if it's an Abrahamic religion, if you want to call it that, there's only one truth between the two. And I was actually thinking to myself not too long ago, like, man, like, what happened to Ishmael? Like, how come there's no writings on Ishmael? Where, where, where's his life and times of his, his life? What happened to him? Because there's nothing going on in, in, the, uh, uh, in the Arab countries until Muhammad. Like, obviously we know they were serving 307 idols, one for every day of the year. But what else? Like, what were they doing before that? Where's the history? I've been thinking to myself, like, damn, like, what is going on? Because you had to wait for one person to bring some type of uh, Abrahamic doctrine, or which is what he stole from the Jews, if you read uh, read about that. Muhammad stole from the Jews. If you read that in Babylon and Timbuktu. He was following Jews around, and that's how it became uh, uh, monotheistic, if you want to call it that. But at the end of the day, Everything that the Quran wants to say, they got it from the Bible.